Hello again. We're working with a sine graph, and remember, a sine graph is continuous. It's going to go continually go this way, continually go this way. But I just wanted to work from zero to two pi, and I went ahead and I already graphed y equals the sine of theta. That's this one right here. What I want to do now is I want to graph y equals two sine of theta. And basically, what I'm going to do is affect something called its amplitude. If I put a number in front of the sine, you know, if I put a bigger number in front of the sine, what's going to happen is that the graph is going to go higher and lower. If I multiply uh, a number in front of sine that's lower than one, then the graph is going to go, you know, lower both on its high point and its low point. What I'm doing is I'm called uh, doing something called affecting its amplitude. Basically, how high or how low the graph goes it affects its amplitude. The amplitude on this graph is one. Now, there's a very simple reason why it is. What's the number that's being multiplied in front of the sine? It's one. So one times the sine of theta is just sine of theta, which means the highest point or the lowest point you'll go on, assuming that there's no vertical shift, mind you, is one. Or basically, the more accurate way to say that is the midline, you know, the middle of the graph. And this doesn't always have to be the middle of the graph, but the middle of the graph to the highest point of the graph, or middle of the graph to the lowest point of the graph, will always be whatever this value is. Well, if I put a two in front of there, what's going to happen is that the, the amplitude is going to be two. It's going to be higher here, and it's going to be lower there. So I went ahead and I wrote my table down, and we'll see how that in fact works. Now what's really cool is this, if you know your sine value, we're not going to account for this one just yet, but I'll do it right afterwards. If I, what's the sine of, you know, zero? And we're all working with radians here, so you have to know this is 45 degrees, 90, 135, 180, 225, 270, um, 315, 360, but I'm converting them to radians. What's the sine of zero radians or zero degrees? It's zero. Well, 0 times 2 is still 0. What's the sine of 90 degrees? Sine of 90 degrees is 1, but if I do it on this function, 1 times 2 is 2. Sine of 180 degrees, or pi, is 0. 0 times 2 is still 0. Sine of uh, 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2, it's the same exact thing except one's radian and one's uh, degrees, is negative 1, but negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. See, that's what I do. I always just figure this one out first. And that's why I like doing it in increments of 45 degrees. If you do it in increments of 30 degrees, then you have to do 30 and 60, which means the values won't match, which means that you have to think more, which is okay, but at the same time... Mm -hmm. Sine of 2 pi uh, is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. Bam. I filled in what I needed to know. Sine of pi over 4, or sine of 45 degrees, is root 2 over 2. Well, root 2 over 2 times 2, or 2 over 1, is just root 2. Uh, root 2 actually comes out to like 1.414. Okay, sine of 3 pi over 4, root 2. Over 2, when I multiply with 2, it's just root 2. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Same thing. No thought process needed there. Perfect. Good job. Uh, there is something, though, to take into account. The sine value up to here is positive. And the sine value up to here is negative. And there you go. And I said the root 2 in a calculator is about 1.414. So let's do this. 0, 0, uh, 1.414. It's like right there. 2, 1.414. Um, yeah, just got to make sure. 0, 1. negative 1.414. Negative 2. And that. So basically what happens is, and by the way, it, it displays the same characteristics. If I, um, if I keep going, it's going to do this. If I keep going, it's going to do this. You know, it, it, it's continuous. It's going to continue that way, and it's going to continue that way. Basically what I'm trying to say is that its domain extends from negative infinity to infinity. The range, however, changes. Like for instance, the range here is from negative 1 to 1. Negative 1 is the lowest point, 1 is the highest point. The range, the range here is from negative 2 to positive 2. So what the amplitude does is it affects the range of the graph, you know, how high and how low graph extend. It doesn't actually do anything to the domain. The domain is still, you know, negative infinity to infinity here. The domain is still negative infinity to infinity here. It doesn't affect the x-intercepts either. 
you know, it still hits here, still hits here, still hits here. What it does do is it affects, you know, when it's, x is not zero, then it's going to make it higher or it's going to make it lower. But that's really cool. And if I went y equals one half sine of theta, which I'm not going to do, then the graph would look something like this, you know. It'd be, that one's, yeah, half of that one actually. So it'd be, here, I'll just do it. Something like that. It doesn't affect the period either. The period is still 2 pi. All this number does in front of the sine of theta when you multiply it is it affects something called its amplitude. Basically, how high or how low the graph goes. Uh, with that said, what we're going to then do is work on something called a uh, vertical shift. This isn't too bad, but it is what it is. But with that said, have a good day for now. Goodbye.